Today we want to, to continue to develop our uh, Marxian value theory that Marx presented in one of his greatest contributions of Capital, of Volume 1. Recall that Marx uh, treats uh, the realm of exchange, the market, as uh, a place in which there is only a redistribution of value from seller to buyer and buyer to seller. In other words, and most important for his surplus value theory, uh, value is not created in exchange, it's merely redistributed from one party to another. So taking our example, uh, we have a person who has um, uh, four dollars, and four dollars in value terms, that is in abstract labor terms, that's what value means, is uh, four dollars is eight hours. Why? Because it takes two hours to produce a dollar um, as, as, as money. So if we, if we as a person, hold um, four dollars, we're holding eight hours. So we take our, let me put that on the board, the whiteboard, person then has four dollars, that's worth eight hours of abstract labor. The person goes out and buys, let's say, in our example, an apple. So the person goes out and buys, you know, one apple. What is the person acquiring then? The person is acquiring, obviously, the commodity an apple, but that's worth eight hours. Why? Because that's what it took to produce an apple. If you recall from before, the apple contains within it embodied labor plus living labor, the total labor, which was eight hours. Four hours of living labor, four hours of embodied labor, eight hours to produce the apple. That's the cost of the apple. So the person who has money, has bought an apple, has given up eight hours, but has gained eight hours materialized in that apple. By the same logic, the producer and seller of the apple required eight hours to produce that apple, four hours of inputs, four hours of living labor, eight hours. So that person, that, that producer and seller is giving up eight hours, that's what it costs to produce the apple, and gaining what? Four dollars, which is precisely eight hours equal to what he, she gives up in selling the apple. So to make, you know, to make a, 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 a long story short, the realm of exchange is the realm in which there is merely a redistribution of value from one agent to another, from one party to the other, from one party to another. No new value, no new surplus labor is created in, in exchange. So if that's the case, where does surplus value come from? You know, that's Marx's question. It can't come in exchange, and hence it must come outside exchange, outside the market. So Marx creates, literally concocts, invents a new commodity to deal with this problem of the creation of value, which doesn't take place in exchange, must take place outside of exchange, which is the realm of consumption. He calls the commodity that's going to create new value, or have the potential of creating new value, labor power. So labor power is a commodity that is bought and sold in capitalism in contrast to feudalism and slavery and so forth. And like any commodity, this new commodity, labor power, has a use and an exchange value, just like any commodity. Remember, all commodities have a use and exchange value and are produced by labor. So labor power, this new commodity that he invents, has a use and exchange value, and I want to examine them carefully since they're at the core of Volume 1, and indeed Marx, and I, I, I don't remember if I told you or not, but Marx once writes a letter to, to Engels saying, Marx, he thinks this is his greatest contribution, the difference between the use and exchange value of this commodity labor power that he's invented. And the reason, again, is because this is the source of, of uh, surplus value. So let me then examine this carefully. Suppose then we have a society, capitalism, in which we have individuals who can sell this commodity labor power. And what again, th again, this, this labor power commodity, this is the capacity of a human being to work, to use his, her brain tissue and muscle tissue to engage in this physical activity of laboring work. 
labor power. And it took centuries for people to have the freedom to sell this capacity to work, and other people have the freedom to buy it. You didn't have this freedom in serfdom. You didn't, one did not have this freedom in slavery. It's capitalism in which this freedom exists. So we have then the seller of this commodity, or sellers of this commodity, labor power. And like all commodities, it has, I'm going to split it now, this is Marx's invention, this splitting here, the use value and exchange value of this particular commodity. Okay? So the sellers sell labor power to whom? To buyers. So I'll put the buyers over here. Those are the capitalists. The buyers acquire the labor power. They give up its value in exchange. They give up, since we're getting closer and closer to it, a value of the labor power. That's the same as the exchange value of labor power, the wage. Okay? That's what the buyers give to the sellers, and therefore the sellers acquire a value of the labor power that they have sold. Okay? What do the buyers get? Well, the buyers get the use value of the labor power, which is, in this case, the actual labor performed in production. Very important, okay? So I'm going to write it out here. The buyers get the use value of labor power, which is the actual labor performed in production. The buyers give up the exchange value, the value of labor power, to give up a wage to the sellers of labor power, and they, they give it up in the market. Let me see. Use value, which is the actual labor performed in production, they give up exchange value in the labor market. Notice something. The market, once again, this is a few lectures ago, is a sphere, a social arena. It's a, it's a, it's a sphere in which people can understand and can see what the heck is going on, okay? So the wage is determined in the labor, or overdetermined in the labor market. This one, the use value, again, is not in the social arena. This is private. This is a relationship between the buyer of, of labor power and the, com and the commodity labor power and its particular use value to the buyer in that private domain. So people are not aware of this. They don't conceive of it. So what Marx is saying is that the workers have alienated their use value, which goes to the buyer, and that's a, that's a private relationship between the buyers of labor power and that which they acquire, the use value. And Marxian theory, in a sense, is a way to reveal what's going on inside this private domain, the factories and offices of the, of the capitalists. And what goes on there, the next step, is the following. Suppose the buyers get, which is the actual labor performed in, in production, suppose the, the buyers get four hours of living labor. Okay? That's what they acquire. So, in a sense, that's the length of the workday. And suppose they give up in the labor market, over here, the, lab the value of labor power and the labor power, they give up two hours, okay? Well, you can see it's not a complicated arithmetic here. If, if the buyers are getting four in production, giving up two in the market, the difference then is two hours. I'm going to erase this, so bear with me, and do the, the same thing again to make sure that this is as clear as I can possibly make it since it's a crucial part of the value theory and the surplus value theory that Marx is developing. So I'm going to write it again. Here's labor power, power use value, exchange value. So what the buyer gets, use value of labor power, is four hours of living labor. Those people go to work, okay, for four hours. It could be more, it could be less. I'm assuming four. If the exchange value is two hours of labor, okay, then we have the difference of a surplus labor, which goes to the buyer, because he, she is getting four and giving up two. 
surplus, the extra labor, the surplus goes to the buyer, is a source of new value. And we have an answer to that question. The, 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 the new value arises, the extra labor arises, by this difference between the use and exchange value of labor power. Let me put money on, uh, dollars on this, okay? <clears throat> if the use value of, of, uh, uh, of labor power is four hours, it, it, and if that creates, say, two dollars of new value in dollars, and if, if the exchange value is two hours of labor, and this costs one dollar, creates cost, then we have a surplus value of a dollar, which goes to the, again, to the buyer of the labor power. So what Marx is arguing here is that the buyer of labor power is getting more in value from what the workers create, two dollars, than what those workers cost in the market, a dollar. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Same thing again, it's so important, okay? In, the same thing, but yet in a, in a different way to make sure that we all understand what is going on in this simple example. So here's Marx's famous equation. The equation is C plus V plus S is equal to W, the worth of a commodity. The capitalists, wants to produce, in my trivial example, apples, sell them on the market, make money. The capitalist needs two inputs to do that. It needs means of production, raw materials, <coughs> fertilizers, ladders, and so forth, and also needs labor power to produce and sell uh, apples. Marx calls the means of production C constant capital, okay? This is the <clears throat> value of the inputs, the non-labor inputs, to produce the particular product, in this case, apples. And I'm gonna do it in two ways. I'm gonna do it in terms of uh, dollars and hours, okay? So I think in the, in the trivial example I gave you some time ago, I said to produce an apple, you need a shirt, you know, to make a silly example. But what I meant was, to produce an apple, you need these, these other physical non-labor uh, inputs. Suppose the cost of them, I'm trying to use the same numbers we did before, was $2. So this is the total cost of all the means of production, and very important now, used up to produce this particular commodity, apples. Okay, so this would be the <coughs> value used up to produce used up to produce apples of, of all your 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 uh, uh, your fixed capital and all the other inputs raw materials to produce apples, and that had a a, a value of four hours. Okay, what does that mean again? So in the background, I don't have it on the board. There's a means of production industry. If you want industries, and <coughs> they have an output price of $2, which is the input price of this particular Apple industry. Or it takes four hours to produce that stuff, and that's why, remember, equivalent exchange, it sells pr pr precisely what it's worth, which is four hours, which is the cost to this particular industry. But you can't produce apples with just these inputs. You need labor power, so you've got to give them these workers a value to acquire their capacity to work in the Apple industry, and I'm assuming the cost there is a dollar, okay? Which is worth two hours, remember? That's what a buck is worth. It's worth two hours of labor to produce the, this commodity, uh, uh, money or dollars, okay? So I got now, what do I have here? Look at the, you're looking at it like I'm looking at it. I have here the costs of production, C plus V, is three dollars or six hours. So C plus V is the production cost of this particular commodity and all commodities, the C plus V, okay? But this labor goes to work, and what does the buyer get? The buyer gets not merely two hours, 
not just the dollar of cost, but the buyer gets more than that. That's what, the, that's what Marx is, is, is arguing here. The buyer gets a surplus that the worker produces above and beyond his or her cost, another dollar, or the two hours. And the total worth, then, of an apple, when it's sold on the market by the apple producer, so the total worth, the total value, the translation from the German, the total worth is then two, three, four, two, three, four, four dollars, or eight hours. Okay? That's what the apple is worth. That's what the apple produced, the apple capitals, sells it for. So, this then is the value added. Let me, I'll write it out. The value added by the worker. The total value added by the worker. Okay. This then is the use value of labor power. Of labor power which is the actual labor performed, the four hours, okay? The use value of labor power, the living labor, the four hours. This is what? From before, this is the embodied labor. And if you add the embodied labor plus the living labor, you get four plus four is the eight hours, which is the value of the apple in labor terms. Okay, and this is what, again, this is what the seller alienates this is what the buyer acquires, okay, that living labor. Why does Marx call it value? Marx sometimes calls this, you know, as I said to you, not, he, constant capital, he calls this variable capital, variable capital, variable, to be contrasted with constant. Why? Well, because the argument, you know, from the whiteboard here is because this particular input varies in value. It, what does that mean? It produces $2.00 a dollar more than what it costs. It varies in value. The constant capital merely adds its value, not terribly surprising, to the cost of the apple, okay? But this one adds more than it costs the capitalist in production. So Marx has established here, okay, that the source of new value, this surplus value, arises outside exchange in the, literally, the consumption of this particular commodity, labor power, by the capitalist. But notice, you know, I mean, it's silly. The capitalist is not a cannibal. The capitalist is not eating the person. What Marx means by the consumption of this particular commodity, what he means is that the use value of this particular commodity is the actual labor performed. So, the con in your reading, the consumption of labor power is when the capitalist puts the laborer to work for those four hours, which is the length of the workday, literally. Okay. Last step on this kind of argument, which again is in volume one in your assigned reading. I'm going to do the, the same thing in yet another way to follow the logic of volume one. This timeline that Marx develops is the length of the workday. Okay, interesting diagram. So, starting with zero, H is the number of hours that the worker works. In this case, four hours of, you know, again, abstract labor. The use value of labor power, what the capitalist acquires. Let's divide this. One, two, three, four hours. So down here I have hours, okay? What does the worker yield in value? So I'll put dollars over here. Okay. Well, over the entire workday, the value added by the worker is $2. Let's see if we can do this. Isn't it not complicated? After one hour, we have here a dollar. Another hour, we have a dollar. Third hour, we have a dollar. Fourth hour, we have a dollar, okay? The worker goes to work, okay? The worker gets paid $2. So after two hours of labor, the worker has basically covered his or her costs. Here's your $2. Uh, did I make a mistake here? Let's see. The worker gets paid 
if I remember correctly now, a dollar. So after two hours of work, the worker has covered his or her wages. That is, the worker creates, oh, that's what I made my mistake, sorry. Good mistake. The worker creates 50 cents each hour not a dollar, okay, because the total is two bucks. So the worker, every single hour, let me be more careful, I'll write it up here, the worker is adding a value every single hour of two dollars, that's the total value added, the use value of labor power, divided by the number of hours worked, so that's 50 cents, not a dollar, like I said, 50 cents per hour. So after two hours of work, let me go back again, the worker has what? Covered his or her wages because the value of labor power is a dollar. So after two hours of labor, the worker produces, as it were, a sufficient value of apples, a buck, to cover the wages. But the worker doesn't go home. The worker continues to work two more hours, producing an additional surplus value of 50 plus 50 of a buck. Okay, so this is the dollar to cover the wages. Here's the dollar of surplus value. And that goes to the capitalist as the buyer of labor power. Marx then, you can see, you, you, I think you can see where Marx then uses this, this uh, 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 poetic expression, okay, uh, this provocative poetic expression, that this then becomes unpaid labor. Because the worker is literally working for two more hours for no pay. Let me do the same thing in a per hour, per hour basis. The worker produces 50 cents per hour. That's the yield of the denominator. So the use value of labor power in the denominator yields a numerator, which is a half a buck per hour. What does the worker get paid per hour? Well, you all know when you go to work, you calculate the total wages that you receive by the number of hours you work. So you're getting a dollar divided by the number of hours here, which would be 25 cents per hour. So the worker produces a half a buck per hour. The worker gets paid 25 cents per hour, you know, times the four, adds up to the four dollars. Marx calls this, or the, you know, in business, this is called the little v, the wage per hour. Marx calls this one the intensity of labor. This is what it yields in the numerator. So we have every single hour, the worker produces 50, gets paid 25 cents. In other words, there's an excess that the worker doesn't get, that the buyer of labor power gets, not the seller. The worker produces an excess of 25 cents per hour. That's a surplus value per hour times the four hours. There's your dollar of surplus value. Okay, this 25 cents per hour of surplus times the four hours worked goes to the buyer of labor power. So whether you do it on a, an hourly basis or as I did it before, <coughs> you do it on the, the total labor hour basis, there is a surplus value that the worker has alienated to the buyer who is the capitalist and that's the source of this extra value, that's the source of profits in capitalism. So we have a in a per labor hour basis, we have the I, the intensity of exploitation, versus the V, little v, for the worker, okay? What the worker is getting paid on, an, let, let me put it in red, make sure that we, I end on this note. The intensity of labor versus the wage per hour. The more the capitalist can increase the intensity and pay the same wage, the more surplus will arise uh, for, for the uh, capitalist in this relationship between buyers 
in cellulose of labor power. So that's the argument that Marx has developed to explain the source of surplus value, and I'm going to build upon that next time.